In this video, you're gonna see a really cheap way to get macro shots on a GoPro camera. You're also gonna see the amazing Daiso Portrait. It's super cheap. And also, you're gonna look at all the toys on Leo Kim Video's review area. This is gonna be unbelievable. Rawr! If you've come here just to dislike this video, go away! Well, first off, sneaking over the side there is a bit of Hot Wheels action, a bit of Thomas, and it's stuff I used in a recent video. Working our way around the jars, I've got some marbles, I've got some squishy little animals, and I've got a Buzz Lightyear toy. Next along, I've got some little wooden robots that can change their shape, I've got some blocks that I've forgotten the name of, and I've got two ninjas! Next up are some toys that you push the bottom and the little figure drops down. I call them drop dead donkeys. I've got some Mr. Men toys. A lot of people ask questions about those. And I've got a whole bunch of Hot Wheels cars. Now looking at the three jars in the middle of the table, I've got some trash packs, red and blue. And I've got three Pez Thomas characters there. And I've got some trash packs, lime and orange. And I've got a Angry Bird Stamper. And I know someone's going to ask, what does the Angry Bird Stamper do? I'd ask the same question. Let's take a look. If you can read that, you're a better man than I. And yes, it looks like it is a licensed product. <coughs> Next up is my Wallace and Gromit collection. There are some suck-on toys and they've got suction cups from Toy Story. That was a collection from something that was given away in the papers in Australia. And there is a whole bunch of matches. Some of those matches will have been used in my videos. Next up is a whole bunch of, you know what they are, I don't need to say the brand name here. Some fairies from I don't know what, maybe you can tell me, and a Spongebob plush. Next up is uh, squinky balls, the things that little squinkies hide in sometimes. There's a bit of Halloween stuff there and some LED torches that I do not use. And if I go sneaking around the corner, there's one more jar most people will never see. It's a whole bunch of cicada shells that I collected this last summer. And my pen holder, which is actually a knockoff Thomas and Friends item. Okay, that was the jars, and you'd be surprised how many people ask me about those jars. Let's take a look at the toys on the top. Let's start over on the other side. Let's go in and look at those ones right there. Okay, here we go. I can't name all these toys. I'm sure you'll be able to. Up the back, I've got some Wishy Monster Pez. My daughter loved those, and that's why I've ended up with them. There's a classic Smurf from the 70s. I'm old enough to remember when they were hanging around, way before they were around now. There's a group of bulldozers here. There's a bit of Angry Bird action. There's things sort of snuck away. There's Angry Bird snuck down there. There's a Babe from um, the film Babe, and it was that horrible film Pig in the City that came next. I don't know why they destroyed that. There's a Scooby-Doo there. There's a Hamburglar there. A Hello Kitty. My goodness, there's just about everything. Let's not forget Astro Boy. He's up there on top of a bulldozer. Okay, moving right along. We've got a little bit of crossover. We need that to explain this. I have got pulled out of boxes my micro machines, which are the Star Trek series. There's the Borg vessel down there. I better not name any more because I've forgotten them all. I used to be a huge Star Trek fan. There's these guys here. I don't know who they are. There's a bit of Buzz Lightyear action going on here. There's a Mr. Potato Head sneaked up the back. There's a rubber chicken. How could you not have a rubber chicken? There's one of my favourite all-time little toys. It's an X-Wing fighter. I think it's a Hungry Jacks thing. Probably made a fool of myself. I'm going to have to take a look. Well, here's an X-Wing fighter. It's a Burger King thing. 2005 Hungry Jacks and Burger King is the same thing in Australia, although Burger King took off. Long story behind that, I'm not going to get into it now. It's a fantastic little toy. You just do not see toys like that when you go and buy junky fast food. I'm saying bring this sort of stuff back, please. Okay, moving right along. First up, I'll talk about this space shuttle model here. It's one I bought at the Kennedy Space Center when I went to look at this 26th space shuttle launch. That was the one after number 25, which tragically blew up. Um, there's some things from past videos, long time ago now. A lot of these toys have come back onto the shelf, they were off for a while, and I thought, well, let's bring them back up. There's a Saturn V here, which is like one of those puzzle ones that you buy. You can break that apart into different pieces. There is an Edward there. It's um, a Tommy Edward. I bought 60 Thomas the Tanks, and he was in the stockpile of Thomas's that I bought. So he is an odd one out, so he's up here. Not that you can, you can barely see it, but there's a, I think it's a Terminator model there. And just on the edge of frame is that weird scary bear from the Toy Story franchise. Okay, moving right along, I've got some Spongebob Pez there. I've also got some Halloween themed Pez there. The critters on top of here came out of surprise eggs. I've got a funny feeling he did as well. I've got a Green Goblin. I've got a Halo figure there. I've got some little cars at the front that I can't tell anything about because I don't know. I think that's a Goomba there from the Mario series. I've got some ponies. I can see a uh, 
just had a mind slip here. One of those guys, a Dalek, but he's missing a part because that silly Angry Birds helicopter whacked into him and took a component away, and I have not been able to find it. I've got a microcharger up the back there, and there's Krusty the Clown, which is sitting right in the middle of the display area because he's a hero. And I should also point out the Mighty Beans. My goodness, they're a popular little toy, as I found out from my $5 toy challenge. I've got some microchargers there, and is that a Bomba Omba? Is that the right name? Moving right along, up the back, we've got some toys that had candy in it. Uh, Angry Birds things, there's a Mario thing, once again that's from a candy toy um, This is out of a surprise egg That's Woody and um, Buzz um, there's, This is a fake knockoff toy here, a Mario one well, I, don't know, I forgot what that's called, my daughter would know of course um, There's one of the little things I did which was an R2D2 hex bug thing There's my cars to USB drive And there's some other figures there that I'm sure other people can name because I can't remember their names right at this moment Moving right along, we've got the Hamburglar with the back here, at least we can see his head, I think I missed Ronald's head before. Got some little train figures down there, I think there were people getting very excited about them, but I've forgotten where I got those from. I've got a piece of tech deck up the back there, but the skateboards that those characters are riding are actually skateboards from McDonald's Happy Meals. I've got a Kiss mug up the back there, I've got a fairly uh, wanted Big Mac, that was a Happy Meal toy from a long, long time ago. I think that's a Star Wars thing, someone can name it for me, I, maybe I'm completely wrong. And there's probably other things in there that I've forgotten. Hey, Big Bird's there, and I can see a little tiny Spongebob sneaking up the back. Up the back there is a squashed up Qantas 747 toy and a Spongebob stationary holder. It's a knockoff one. There's one of those as well, but I can't remember his little name. Moving right along, I've got some superheroes up the back there. I believe that's the Hulk, I believe that one's Spider-Man, I believe that one's Hugh Jackman. I've got a Pez Cars thing there. There's a Green Goblin there. I've got some trash packs. Trashies up the front here. I've got Mickey Mouse stuff there. I've got some Star Wars M&M mishmash stuff. Boy, there's another big bomber thing there. Mario thing. A little dinosaur from um, Surprise Eggs, but I think he's missing his tail. Tail went adrift somewhere. And other things there that I probably don't even know the name of. Hey Hulk, can you say a few words about YouTube in 2013? <laughs> Thanks for that. You summed it up quite well. Up next to the Hulk is that thigh holding two guns. Am I correct in saying that? Moving on to the last clump of toys, we've got a little Roadrunner and Coyote thing going on there. We've got a SpongeBob that was a Happy Meal toy thing. That Mario and Luigi are just knockoff, I don't know what you call them, knockaramas that you put in the back of your car to annoy other people. I've got a Bugs in there, I've got a Tweety, I've got some other figures that are from all sorts of different um, realms. I suppose you guys know what they're from. I certainly don't. Um, I've got another one of those weird, whatever they are, I have no idea what that's from. I've got the Spongebob boat, you can just see there with Patrick there as well. There's a Bob the Builder in there, if you can see that, it'd be pretty hard to see. And there's a fun little UFO thing that you wind up and it goes berserk. So there you have it, I hope I've covered all those toys and what's in the jars correctly. I had a lot of people ask me about that. I've gone retro a bit, I did have this look, well when was it, about a year back. For a while there I had a whole bunch of Thomases, but I got really tired of those beady eyes looking at me all the time. In fact, I've detrained a lot of the toys up the back. You know what I mean by detrained. And now I've gone back to a classic mishmash. Just imagine a text info spam I can have associated with this video. I can have every toy brand on earth. i just like to talk about the Dezo bullet train. And it's something that I very, very briefly touched upon in another video. That's the train in the foreground there. In the background there I've got the Tommy Tomica. Um, their version of the bullet train and it's a beautiful piece it actually comes with a metal carriage if you wanted to put it in there but I've actually learned a little bit more about this train and it's worth looking at some packaging to find out more the Dezo train is called Super Express the way you purchase stuff in Dezo is everything is the same price in Australia there is only one price scale and that's two dollars eighty I do believe in the USA they've got price scalings which start at a dollar and in Japan they've got price scalings which start at 100 yen now let's take a look at the parts that I've got to this train. And just looking at the packaging, the only cars that I've got is what I'd call the first car and the rear car. There is a motor car. So if I purchase that motor car, it's going to be $2.80 for me. And there is one called the middle car. I'm yet to see these two cars in the stores that I go to in Australia. So the piece that I'm really after is going to be somewhat like this middle car on the Tommy Tamika set. But it's going to be powered. And I'm thinking, wow, if you could pick up something like that, which is powered for $2.80, that's probably the best buy ever with a little toy train in Australia. 
Personally, I think this Days of Bullet Train is a spectacular toy train. My son just loves pushing it around. As I push around a model like that, but once it's powered up and running, he's going to get mighty excited. And I'll tell you what, that Daiso train has got a lot of similarities going on with the Tomy style train. They're about the same width, it looks like the wheels are very similar distance apart. I reckon I could literally swap the insides of one out and put it inside the other. That's how close together these trains are. And to give you a broader scope of what Daiso have, well like I said in Australia it's everything is $2.80, there's only a single price scale where we live, but it really is a store of all sorts of variety, a lot of lady stuff there, but there's also man stuff there. I advise anyone to go and check it out. And because I am investigating their train system, of course I bought some components. Everything you buy, well everything I bought was $2.80, so I got four staunchons for $2.80. Each train piece is $2.80. They have track sets as well. There are four pieces of track in there. It is very similar to Tomy track. The coupling system is a little bit different, I believe. They've got the old bridge. It's a bridge which is very similar to the Tony system. $2.80 for the bridge. And you can buy staunchons because you need staunchons to go up to have your bridge up high. The staunchons are $2.80. I'm yet to investigate how compatible they are with Tony. There's some more trains there and there's even a little signal. And I will look at all this stuff more closely in the future once I get the whole train system together. $2.80 for a signal, which I think is pretty good. Here's an example of something else that I purchased the days It's a little countdown timer. If you need to be reminded about when to stop something or do some cooking things, it's perfect. It's got a little magnet on the back. What I notice about Daiso and the one I go to in Chatswood is where it is, it has killed off the $2 shops. The traditional Chinese run $2 shops around it, such is the powerful force of Daiso. Another thing I purchased is this magnifier, and you might be thinking, oh, well, big deal. What's that useful for? You clown, why did you buy that? Well, it's got a little purpose for me that possibly other people don't understand. Let's take a look. Well, here is a GoPro Hero 3. It is the first camera I've ever purchased where you have to buy a lens cap as an optional extra. I mean, can you believe that? It's the first camera I've purchased that does not have a tripod mount built into the camera. I mean, can you believe that? Do you hear people saying that in their reviews? No. Why not? Well, let's try and work that out ourselves. That little lens thing that I purchased from Dayzo for $2.80 is perfect for pulling off macro shots when you mount it up to the front of a GoPro camera. I've got my Dezo magnifier mounted up to my GoPro with a bit of blue tack. And look at this guys, I can do some beautiful macro work on that Hot Wheels car, all thanks to that $2.80 Dezo magnifier. And if you've ever played with a GoPro, you'll understand they're absolutely hopeless at macro work. Maybe the best way to demonstrate it is rip off that lens on the front. And that's what you got, a blurry lump of Hot Wheels. And I know someone's going to say, how did you mount that camera up? Well, that's how rough and ready I am these days, guys. No messing about with me once I've got the blue tack in my hands. And now you've seen this little magnifier, I dare say, it solves another mystery to some of the shots that you've seen on my normal camera. And they're ones like this. Made in Malaysia, the mystery machine. Sorry for the pun, guys, but I couldn't help myself. Well, how about that, guys, for a crazy mixed-up video, a whole bunch of stuff I talked about then. This video is far too long. YouTube now hates long videos, which meander across a whole bunch of different things, so it's a failure right from the start. Anyway, if you last this long, I thank you, and bye for now. And I know someone's going to ask, what does the Angry Bird Stamper do? Well, let's take a look. I'd ask the same question. Oh, fail. In this video, you're going to see an easy way to make stuffed up. An easy way to get macro shots and I can see my finger. All those toys are fantastic. That was spooky, wasn't it? Hey guys, I'll give you a tip, it's not easy being green.